Hi, this is Jim Lavelle, clinical pharmacist and board certified clinical nutritionist talking about probiotics today and not just any probiotics, but actually Chiodophilus from Wakanaga. You know, all probiotics aren't created equal and you have to realize that, you know, it should be from human strain. They have to have a duplication rate, meaning there should be studies that say when you take these probiotics and they get into your intestine, that they actually have a good doubling rate, meaning that they're growing and replicating. In addition to that, they need to be stable on the shelf. And I've got to tell you, when you start to add all those things up, it becomes few and far between on um, probiotics that meet all the criteria that you should be looking for when, when trying to search out a probiotic. You know, the first thing is to understand is what exactly influences the intestinal flora? Because I think a lot of people think that, oh, hey, you know, I'm not having gas, I'm not having bloating, my intestinal flora is just fine. But the reality is, is that you could be having shifts in your immune system due to changes in your intestinal flora that could be causing problems maybe even years down the road. So the first thing to realize, if you've had a rich history of being on antibiotics, it's probably affected your beneficial flora. If you're on oral contraceptives or hormone replacement therapy, it can affect your intestinal flora. The fact that corticosteroids, which are used very commonly, affects your flora. Taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, things like ibuprofen and naproxen, which are common NSAIDs, affects your beneficial flora and can affect your future health. If you're taking a proton pump inhibitor or PPI or an H2 blocker, meaning an acid blocking drug, you change the pH of your stomach and your intestine, and that means that the beneficial flora have a harder time surviving. So if you're gonna be on those types of medications, these are some of the primary things you should be doing to help prevent future progression into other conditions. Other things that can have a big effect, sugar intake. I know for all the health movement that's out there, people are still eating too many starches and sugars. You know, we still have a big obesity problem. The number one reason for it is for starch is start, you know, starch and sugar intake without a doubt. You know, people will say to me all the time, hey, it's a box of gluten-free cookies. So what if I ate the box? It's healthy, they're organic. The reality is we're still taking in too much starch, most likely due to stress eating behaviors. And if you're doing that and you're noticing gas and bloating and abdominal distension, then try a probiotic. You may not realize this, but probiotics actually dictate the intestinal hormones that tell your brain whether you're full or not. Probiotics actually have a dramatic impact on your appetite. I know people don't even realize that. They also help to metabolize hormones. But there's other things that affect your flora. So things like bacterial cytochemicals in drinking water, right? So when you put a lot of chlorine in water, it kills all the bugs. That's great. But if you're drinking tap water, guess what's happening to the bugs inside your body when you take it? They're getting killed too. So it's really smart to think about, I'm going to drink filtered water. Um, there's pesticides in our food that are known to change the microbiome. And you, we should realize that, that if you're going to eat foods that aren't organic, make sure you're washing them thoroughly. If you're drinking alcohol on a regular basis, alcohol affects your gut flora. Um, exposure to env other environmental chemicals like heavy metals can affect gut flora. pH of your gastrointestinal tract affects gut flora. So if you're into drinking tons of alkaline water, you may want to think that through again, because if you're drinking a little bit of alkaline water, that might be okay. But if you're drinking it all the time, that's adjusting the gastrointestinal pH, and that means you may be altering your gut flora. Stress has a tremendous impact on gut flora, so make sure that you understand that it, you know, if I'm under chronic stress, my gut flora is probably being affected, and that means that I'm putting my immune system under stress. But a lot of people don't realize that a lot of chronic inflammation, the origins of it come from the gut. When you don't have adequate beneficial flora, you don't keep your tight junction secured. Now, what does that mean? That sounds like a lot. Tight junction glycoproteins sit between the epithelial cells of your intestine, meaning you've got one cell lining thick separating you and the, your intestine from your bloodstream. And when that one cell lining thick gets compromised, it allows dipeptides and undigested proteins to get into your bloodstream and trigger inflammatory responses. So when your body doesn't have beneficial flora, 
That's the key regulators of your immune health for your intestine, but it's also one of the key structural regulators for your epithelial cells to maintain their integrity. And a lot of folks don't realize that, that there's a structural component to what the beneficial flora is providing for the whole length of your intestine. And so, you know, what really causes this problem with leaky gut? I mean, I think it's important for you to realize that there's a lot of reasons for it. First of all, you could have an inflammatory diet. So if you're eating the wrong foods, too many sugars, too many refined starches, you know, maybe too many saturated fats with not enough fiber, that's going to be a problem. Um, stresses and emotions have a huge impact on your gut. When you're under stress, you're going to release a tremendous amount of histamine. A lot of people get surprised by that, but it's estimated that as much as 40% of all dermatologic problems are actually due to stress. And one of the reasons for that is, is when you're under stress, you alter your beneficial flora and now you release a lot more histamine and that expresses in your skin. And then there's other things that can cause leaky gut, things like toxin exposure and low stomach acid. And what the net result of it is, is when your beneficial flora is not significantly playing a role in your health, is that you end up with food allergies, which let's face it, back when I was going through school in grade school, we wouldn't get any problem with bringing a bag of peanuts to school. Today, you could end up at detention right? So it's a problem today that more and more people are becoming allergic to foods. Um, just be on an airliner. There's times where you know, hey, no peanuts will be passed out because someone has a serious peanut allergy. Um, malnutrition occurs when your probiotic uh, flora is not healthy inside of you, right? You don't absorb your nutrients and utilize your nutrients in your body. You get dysbiosis, meaning that you start to grow more yeast and other unfriendly bacteria when you don't have the beneficial flora to maintain them. And then you also end up with toxin overload because the beneficial flora actually play a role in helping you to detoxify on a daily basis. Now, what's the net net result of all of this when the beneficial flora aren't present? Well, you have an elevated total allergic and toxin burden in your body that leads to systemic conditions and problems and illnesses as we're aging. And let's face it, guys, people are getting sicker at earlier ages. Think of the amount of kids with food allergies. Think of the amount of you that are out there that developed adult food allergies. Once you know you got allergies, you've got to start looking for a probiotic. Um, another thing to realize is that when you get a leaky gut, you make more circulating endotoxin. Now, why am I bringing this up? Endotoxin is associated with metabolic syndrome, meaning that the more toxic my colon becomes, the more leaky my intestine gets, the more the epithelial cells get compromised, I get more circulating endotoxin or lipopolysaccharide, and it's directly associated with the symptoms of metabolic syndrome. So it's strange to think about this, but the leakier your gut, the less the integrity of the gut the more you lead yourself towards elevated triglycerides, elevated lipids, elevated blood pressures, elevated blood sugars. Pretty interesting, right? But that's the whole aspect of your immune system. 70% of your immune system is in response in your, in your gut. Now, the last thing to think about is the fact that when you take probiotics, in particular, chiodophilus, it was shown to reduce circulating inflammatory compounds like TNF-alpha and increase uh, important compounds like in interferon gamma, and then also it helped to reduce interleukin-6. Now, why are three big compounds that you hear about? But the reality is, is that when I can reduce inflammatory compounds, that means that my immune system is staying healthier and I'm not leading to systemic inflammation. Now, the last thing that you should know is that this stability of product is incredibly important. And after 40 months, chiodophilus at room temperature was shown to not lose any of its potency versus a wide variety of other products that were tested by a third-party lab. So once again, go with an ingredient or a product that you can trust. Think of chiodophilus as a product that's human strain tested for viability in your body, tested for immune response in your body, and most importantly, tested for stability.